Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to Patch Note Breakdown. Uh, if I'm completely honest, I forgot this was actually happening. So I was there playing Diablo, and I don't know why. I had a break or something, looked on Reddit, Patch Notes. I was like, whoops. So it's actually quite late at the moment. Um, my, my bad, but I'm still getting it done, and I'm still going to get it out as today's second video. <laughs> it looks to be a pretty big Patch Note as well. Uh, what I would say is if you appreciate that we're doing it, uploading it all in the same day, please do throw a like on the video and comment what you think. I'm also going to, if I remember, I'll have a keyword somewhere in this video that you can type in the comments and I'll know you've made it throughout the video. Anyway, let's get into it. So, um, pro play, I think, is the main focus for this patch. Thank God Zeri and Yumi are once again getting nerfed. Just reminding everybody... <laughs> Both of those champions have been changed so many times uh, that they are still continuing to be a problem. Patch highlights, though, a lot of changes. So nerfs to uh, Gragas, mainly Gragas lane. So, you know, I do play Gragas, so that's a bit of a bummer, but he he is crazy, so I, I'm fine with it. Cassante, Kazix has been around. I'm, I'm surprised Hecarim isn't here, by the way, because he still is in most games, it feels. Uh, Cogmore, Lulu, Milio. Rel, Yumi, and Zeri. And then buffs to Ash, Gangplank, hello, uh, Kaiser, Nasus, Orianna, Rise, and Severe. Adjustments to Lucian and Rumble. System changes to most of the AD carry items. And if it's not the AD carry items, it's the support items. So a lot of the changes that Riot implemented recently, I was questioning, a lot of people questioning, because they just were insane. So I'm hoping we're going to get a bunch of nerfs here, because AD carries... They were strong the whole season, and then they got an update that made them stronger. It didn't make sense to me, like, and it didn't make sense to a lot of people. We've got new skins. That is Shan... Shanghai? I'm guessing it's some... And I might be completely wrong here, but it might be some... Asian holiday? That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Let me know if you know any more than I do. And those skins will be available June 25th. Also worth knowing on this patch, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 14th of June, the, the new TFT set is also coming out as well. So let's get into it. Ch Ash, sorry, passive bonus damage increased, W damage increased, and R damage increased. So Ash has been at a weak point uh, compared to Arb, the Marksman and supports. Our goal is to bring Ash into a more viable state as Marksman are, um, by reversing some of the nerfs made in a previous patch so basically yeah they're just changing what they did before um so her bonus damage or passive has gone from 115 percent uh to 120 percent of critical strike damage again ash technically doesn't crit uh but crit does help her so ash doesn't crit in a traditional way when she gets frost on a target and then attacks that target she then does more damage in terms like when it's frost the more a uh, crit she has so that is kind of her individual mechanic so that's getting a small buff volley also a small buff technically that is a buff for both obviously ad carry it's just base damage but support will be happy about that it's more poke for them although you don't see a lot of ash supports anymore i think hilariously the meta and the gameplay dare i say has kind of gone back to being incredibly fast and high tempo Ash support, I think, struggles when the game is this high tempo because she's she's slow and she gets caught out. Like Ash is a champion, and especially support because it's even squishier, arguably, than AD carry. I think she struggles in this type of high tempo meta. You know, when there's a Hecarim running around every game, Ash is just easy prey. But it's getting a buff, a twenty percent more ability power, which again doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're playing support Ash, which that is what this buff is for, more. Um, she does get some AP and items. And hell, even AD carry, if they go the on-hit Ginsu's build, that stuff has AP on it now as well. So it will help a bit. Gangplank, big good change for Gangplank here, by the way. Um, I do think this might even be a revert of some kind. But um, yeah, you haven't I, I don't see a lot of Gangplank anymore. I will say the item adjustments probably have hurt him because he did build Prowlers. He also built Infinity Edge. Both of those items are gone. Uh, or you can't... Well, you can buy Infinity Edge, but then that's your Mythic. And then there's Triforce as well that's really strong at the moment. So Gangplank is probably in this weird space of what do I build? Um, and yeah, they he struggles 
to get ability haste and obviously his ability haste actually came through i think essence reaver which you probably still build but then obviously buying a prowlers that also gave ability haste and he's not going to buy a prowlers anymore so that's hurt him quite a lot again reminding everyone everybody gets to see how many barrels he has available now so that even hurt him so they just been giving a nice quality of life change that it was 18 seconds all ranks the recharge timer of getting more barrels is now 18 down to 14 so it's still quite high but it's a bit better than before so that's nice gragas so yeah gragas high presence in pro play again <laughs> i will the only thing i will say about these patch notes I do wish Riot, and you know, we've we've had these criticisms before, but I do wish Riot wouldn't just do everything about pro play. More people don't play pro play, obviously, than do. And you're changing the entire game for not even 0.1% of the players in the game. Not even, you know, if there's 100 million players technically that play every month or year, whatever it is, the statistics, how many pro league players are there in total? 500 maybe like it's the tiniest of percent and i know pro play well some regions of pro play it's not incredible viewership anymore like i don't know if riot should be still focusing on so much pro play but they are i'm not saying that gregor shouldn't get nerfed it just bugs me when it's like gregor has a high presence in pro play he has a high presence in solo queue as well you could mention that you could say hey he has a high presence in pro play and solo queue like just completely disregarding it or not mentioning it. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel great to me. So it's passive, and this will affect jungle as well, by the way, but it's more for his lane because he couldn't really get poked down. You trade with a Gragas and you might go even, but Gragas has so much inbuilt regen from his passive. When he casts an ability, which used to be every eight seconds, he regens a percentage of his health uh, that I think was based on level. Um, it's now 12 seconds, so... It's a 50% nerf, but it's it's still going to be good. You know, they're not going to make Gragas disappear. Again, his mana cost of his barrel. Although, whoa, that's getting buffed. Huh? Why are they giving him a buff? Riot does this a lot. You can have a really strong champion like Gragas, who just deserves a nerf, and they'll nerf something and then buff something else. Oh, that trade-off, I think, is worth it. Because honestly... One of Gragas's major weaknesses is his mana usage. It's really high, and he doesn't sometimes build the most mana regen build. He just goes for pure one-shot wombo. That's really nice. Like That's good in jungle. That's good in top mid. That's just great. You max Q, and you're, it's going to be a 60 mana cost. That's really good. I don't know why they've done that, but okay. I'm not complaining. I'll still be playing Gragas. Cool. Cassante, uh, you do see Cassante every now and then. He still is very popular and powerful. Um, the thing with Cassante, I don't know. He's, I guess it's just the nature of more modern champions. He's very feast or famine, less feast or famine than other newer champions because he's a tank and so he can always be tanky. But I either see, and I don't know if you guys are the same. I either see Cassante's take over or basically do nothing. There's not really an in between, uh, and obviously a tank that's taking over feels very oppressive because you can't even kill them. They're so tanky and then they murder your face. Um, so the cooldown of his E is going up. Uh, 1.5 second nerf across every single rank. So it makes him not be able to trade as much in lane as easy. So that's just a straight up nerf to Cassante. Kaisa, AD growth increased. So even though I've seen Cassante's pop off like mad recently, I don't know if you guys have, but I really have. She's getting a buff. So, um, yeah, 2.6 attack damage growth per level. So it's worth saying here, our goal with these changes is to make her Q evolution feel better. For example, this should grant her Q evolution at level 9 with Storm Razor, Pickaxe, and Doran's Blade and one adaptive instead of having to wait until level 11. Dude, that's a huge buff. So she gets her evolve with those items, the exact same items that she normally would have early two levels quicker than she normally did god riot is so centric into ad carries now it's insane Ugh. uh kazix again been around for a long time so they're just nerfing his base attack damage down i know obviously um and again i like saying these points in patch notes if you're newer to the game or you know you're watching these patch notes for the first time and you're 
I see the confusion that some people have. Like, you know, Kazix has been so strong forever. Crazy. You know, some people even would say he's OP. They're only nerfing three attack damage. That's going to do nothing. The thing about League of Legends... Yeah. In the... I, I, and it's, 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 it's hard for me to admit it. And it's hard for any player to admit it. We can have criticism of, of Riot. We can say that they've got biases towards certain roles or champions, which they do. The game is not balanced and balanced at the same time. In the grand scheme of things, if you look at the mass, the biggest picture you can, League is actually quite balanced. And like the thing, if you look at the really broad picture, there's over 160 champions. There's 100 plus items. When you take all of that into account, the fact that the strongest champions in the game usually roughly have a 54% win rate, maybe 55. And the weaker champions have a 54, 55. There's a 10% swing. So in essence, the strongest champions in the game of every, out of every 100 games, they win 55 out of 100 games. They still lose 45 games. And then the weakest champion in the game loses, well, they, they win 45 games with a 45% win rate and they lose 55. That is not an insane difference for how vast amount of characters and everything. I'd wager if you look at a game, different game, if you look at like something like a fighter game, like Street Fighter or Tekken, where they may have 20 playable characters. If you looked at their win rate in pro play or competitive, I bet they have a bigger swing on the lowest win rate character in Street Fighter and the highest win rate character would not shock me at all. And they've got a 20 player roster with no items or 20 character roster with no items. And League has got so much more complexity, complexity when it comes to balance. So in the grand scheme, it's balanced. And that's why you only can nerf something by three attack damage. Because if you go, right, Kazix has been around forever. He's really OP. Let's take off 20 of his base attack damage he'd be the weakest champion in the game. That's the point. He'd be awful. He'd be killed in every early fight. He'd do no damage early. It's the minute things that make all the difference. Like again, Kaisa, think of it. A 0.6 buff of AD growth per level. That's it. 0.6. Not even one extra AD per level. 0.6 AD extra per level. She gets to evolve her Q two levels before. That's huge. These are the minute changes that make all the difference. So hopefully that makes sense if you've ever wondered that. Cogmore. Cogmore's doing really good. Again, obviously when um, they announced all these changes, I was like, Jesus Christ, Cogmore's going to be an absolute monster. And lo and behold, he is. Uh, he's still not really popular though. And I think the problem with Cogmore is Cogmore historically has been the biggest, let's say, baby AD carry in the game. It's protect the Cogmore comps. And I think a lot of players still have that in their mind. So they're a bit worried of, oh, yeah, Cogmore's strong, but then I've got to play Cogmore and my team have to protect me. If you play Cogmore, the only practical thing that you need to protect you is your support if they play one of two champions, Milio or Lulu. That's it. If you've got a Milio or a Lulu, you can play Cogmore no matter what. That's insane. And he's really strong and he's not even that weak early anymore even though he hyperscales. So his bonus magic damage of his W is going down, uh, unsurprisingly, because uh, obviously it was melting people's maximum health. So it was 3.5 to 6.5% of target's maximum health, and then plus an extra percent, 100 AP. It's now 3 to 6. So again, a 0.5% nerf each rank. Like I said earlier, it doesn't sound like a lot. It is the difference if you just died to a Cogmore, this nerf will probably mean you would have survived in that situation. If you just died, now you'll just survive. Those are the kind of changes that Riot's looking to make. So there we go. Lucian, passive damage decreased, activation conditions adjusted. So yeah, Lucian's had some problems. Like he's obviously more early game centric than most AD carries, but he's had incredible synergy, especially with Nami. And obviously they have gotten rid of partially that synergy. I don't know if they're bringing it back here. But um, yeah, like he's had 
very high highs and actually quite low lows. There's not really been a medium ground for Lucian. And I'm not surprised. Is the problem with a more early game centric AD carry. He's going to have really high highs if he's got a crazy good lane partner and manage the snowball. And if it doesn't go well, you just are useless. That's the point. I'm fine with that because, again, there, there needs to be these niche champions or there needs to be like an AD carry that's more early game. Not every AD carry can be a late game hyper, hyper carry. But yeah, so Lucian performs exceptionally well with a few enchanters due to them having plenty of abilities to instantly spro uh, proc Vigilance by healing, shielding, or buffing Lucian. Nami and Milio are particularly strong due to the buff proc synergizing well with Nami's E and Milio's passive, which has really limited the amount of other champions Lucian can lane with. True. You don't, if you pick, if someone's locked in Lucian and then you pick Nautilus, that Lucian's going to hate you, like just straight up. And like, you're, you're not fulfilling what he wants. And that's not great because, you know, you shouldn't have to play if you if in your video game you should play i guess what you're wanting to play you know you're a tank support player then jumping on an enchanter is going to feel a bit weird uh but anyway to address this we'll be replacing the buff proc of vigilance with nearby ally immobilize whoa they are changing it nearby ally immobilization whoa dude there's going to be some salty duos who play like lucian and uh, nami that, that is big uh, which would increase Lucian's uh, viability with many champs. Lucian will still have a synergy, increased synergy in some cases, with many enchanters. This will limit the amount of stacks an enchanter can give Lucian without first engaging on their opponents. A goal of these changes is to help Lucian players confidently lock their champion with or without enchanters, and that can see some exciting new uh, lane partners in pro play. What about solo queue? That's interesting. So the damage of it is going down. So yeah, it's, it is getting nerfed, but the condition now is when Lucian is empowered by another ally, his next two basic attacks will deal down. That's what it was. It's now when Lucian is healed or shielded by an ally, or when a nearby enemy champion is immobilized, boom, that's huge. Okay, so before, it was only when he got empowered by an ally, he would then get extra damage with his, with his passive. But now, if you do pick that Nautilus and you immobilize an enemy champion, you're procking his passive. So you now can play other champs with Lucian, and it won't feel awful. That's actually a really big change. Damn, that's good. I like that. And worth knowing, I was going to say, you know, there might be duos that are angry if they one-trick Lucian and Nami. I don't think they will. They're, they're going to feel a hit because it's, it has been nerfed. So, like, but they, they still... When it healed or shielded by an ally. So technically, Nami's E no longer works. The 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 damage proc thing, that no longer works. She has to use W on him. Or Lulu has to shield the Lucian. She can't again use W on Lucian. They have to use the heal or the shield. Hmm. But it's worth knowing. Something like Nami specifically could W the Lucian and that procs Light Slinger. And then if she bubbles a target, it procs it again because she's immobilized them. Then she could alter target and it immobilizes them again. So Nami could proc it three times. So she still is actually like that. What they said here is actually increasing synergy in some cases. Technically, with this change, I think Nami before could only proc it twice. She once, no, once or twice. I don't know if her W used to count. Her E obviously counted. Her W might have. But now she could technically proc it three times. So if she could only proc it once before, this is actually a buff in how many times they can proc it. And that's probably why they've done this nerf. Is because for some matchups, Lucian will be able to proc it more if their support plays well. And that is another thing that I've heard some people have criticism, especially for the Lucian Nami player. You didn't have to play well on Nami to contribute to the lane. All you needed to do was press E on Lucian and good luck. Well, now a Nami to, to maximize even their Lucian, the Nami has to play well. Heal him at the right time to proc the passive, land the bubble to again proc the passive, and then land your ulti to proc the passive. If you don't land the bubble, it won't activate. If you don't land your ulti, it won't activate. You can obviously, yeah, point and click and press W, but you got to hit your spells. 
I think that's actually a really nice change. A lot of people's criticisms of it and Enchanter support players is they actually don't play a lot. They just kind of stand there and go, heal, and that's about it. I think this is going to make, especially for Nami and Lucian, that synergy, it's going to make the support have to do more, which I like. Lulu, a base armor decreased, passive magic decreased, E shield value increased. It's worth knowing. Um, I even made a video a few days about it of like question mark. Lulu is now D tier. It's why I don't trust um, tier lists. I, I just don't. I think they're rubbish. I think they are a complete. They're a complete, a complete noob bait. Usually, if you're newer to the game and you don't have your own experiences, you look up a tier list to get all your answers, and half the time they're not right. If Lulu is D tier, she wouldn't get be, be getting any nerfs, and she's getting nerfs. She's not D tier in well. She, she's not bad in that game of lulu we did really well like it's, she's not bad at all so she's getting squishier because she's too tanky her magic damage is also going down by base uh but her shield is going up so there's some compensation buffs but there is also some nerfs too so there we go milio uh, again strong champion obviously newer champion in the game the, the problem with milio that i think there is is Milio got released, arguably at the wrong time. He got released when they very quickly then after did a complete AD carry item overhaul that made especially on-hit champions go nuts. And Milio is the absolute support where Lulu used to be, and she still is good. Milio has become basically the, the, the absolute Lulu, if that makes sense. But if you're playing especially an enchanter, have a milio with you and all those auto attacks that you're trying to on hit on hit on hit you're having increased range you're getting movement speed you can't be cc'd as easily milio is the absolute key to cogmore varus on hit like it's just so strong so i think that's kind of part of the uh the, the problem with milio but as the actual champion i think he's cool but i think it's just the timing of the ad carry change has been a thing so the uh, armor's going down, making a bit more squishy, and the armor growth, so just overall more squishy in lane and in the game. And then his passive fired up, his empowered attack damage, um, based on the ally's level, was 15 to 35% AD. It's now just being flat out nerfed to 15%, so that's actually quite a big nerf. There's that. Ouch. Nasus, a champion you do not see. Um, hmm. Passive lifesteal increased, our cooldown now decreased with rank. So his passive lifesteal, a lot of people forget Nasus has a lot of lifesteal, you know, like Aatrox level lifesteal, basically. Lifesteal was 9, 14, 19, based on level 6, 11, and 16. It's now 11% up to 21%, so 2% extra, that's not bad. And then his ultimate was 120 seconds flat, it's now 120, 180. Eh! I mean, the problem with Nasus is, dare I say, he's a worse version of Scion. So Nasus in his base is a split pusher, always has been. He's not very good at team fighting because he's so slow walking around. Oh, let me cue you. Oh, I got chain CC'd. Oh, I'm dead. He's not very good at doing that unless he's astronomically fed, which is rare for a Nasus because he's a hyperscaling champ, not an early game champ. So a lot of them split push. Problem is, he's not as good as Sion with split pushing. He's probably okay. And I bet if Sion players actually were like, let's play Nasus, I bet they probably would do quite well. Buy a hull breaker on Nasus, get some tanky items, get really good stacks of his Q. He probably is very hard to beat later. Problem is, Sion exists, and Sion just brings so much more vers versatility to the game because you can split push like mad on Sion. You've got your death passive that you can get cheeky kills where you normally shouldn't. But then Sion can join a team fight. If he joins a team fight as surprise with his ulti, knocks up somebody, then gets or gets a surprise full charge Q, it can win a game. He provides CC. Nasus doesn't have any hard CC. He's got his W that's a slow, but that's not insane. So I don't know. I, 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 I This is the type of change that I say, like, it's not going to make people play Nasus, but if you already play Nasus, if you're a main or a one-trick, it'll make you happy. So why not? 
Oriana, our damage increased by base damage, starting at level 11's one, and AP. Eh, okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some play there. Uh, Rel, I'm not going to go through these all these changes, because if I'm completely honest, these are for mainly jungle. I've not seen Rel jungle yet. I've seen Rel top. I've not seen Rel jungle, so I can't really comment on it the, the only thing that i'll say is base that's a default adaptive force uh, strat, a stat and this is going to probably hurt jungle is going from attack damage to ap so yeah that's going to probably hurt a uh, her jungle clearing a bit i'd imagine but they are changing things then they're, they're nerfing it in essence or nerfing it in the early game but giving it better late game no so yeah for her q that's true nerfing the w so yeah, in essence, they're just nerfing Rel Jungle. Rumble. Uh, weirdly, I saw a few Rumbles today, and they actually perform pretty good. So what are they doing? Um, base health decreased, health growth increased. So squishier in the in the early game, probably tankier in the late game. Passive heat limit increased. Ooh. Overheat monster damage cap adjusted. Or are they doing? Is it Jungle Rumble? Um, overheat attack speed increased, overheat duration decreased, Q damage adjusted, minion damage decreased, monster damage cap ad added, W shield uh, adjusted, heat generation increased, and R, R cooldown increased. So we're hoping for a result where top lane becomes Rumble's best role, with jungle and mid lane being viable alternatives for fans who play those styles. Ooh. So they, they want him to go back in top. To be fair, I think today I saw one mid rumble, one top rumble. Um, so the passive, this is quite important. Whoa, 50 more heat? Interesting. Huh. I don't know if... The, dude, that's going to make so many rumble players have to relearn rumble because so many of them will know their combo and that of like how much heat they can produce. And now they get 50 more heat. So just, just reminding everybody... There are times with Rumble when if you eat, if you reach maximum heat, which is now 150, you cannot cast any more abilities, but then your auto attacks are empowered. Um, but obviously, most of the time, you're doing most of your damage when you have your actual abilities, not the auto. So that does mean that you can probably cast more abilities before you overheat. So that's good. Um, and the overheat duration is also lasting less too. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, so they are giving monster cap on percent just for this Q. Uh, magic damage is going down. Cons Whoa, hello. That's top lane. Oh, that's top lane. So I was like, why are they nerfing it if they want him to be played? So yeah, considerable nerfs to base damage. But he is now burning maximum health. Oh. Rumble could be a serious contender now, actually. Because, again, I saw two Rumbles today, and they both did good. That's before this. And he they, they now burn. God, imagine, just to say, like, I, I played, by the way, and they'll be coming in the next few days. I played a game of Scion today, and I think I reached 5k health at 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, Rumble will have Q maxed, right? He's going to be doing 10% of maximum health damage. Just with his Q. Whoa, damn, Rumble could be fun. I might play Rumble. If I play top lane, I might play Rumble. And they're saying he, you can play it jungle if they just want top lane to be the primary. Uh, the shield value is going down by base, but you're getting maximum health from it. Ah, they're, tr they're trying to make him build demonic. That's what they're doing. I need to sneeze. Oh, bless me. Bless me. Thank you very much. Um... The ability power is also getting nerfed, but because he's getting maximum health. And again, that's maximum health, by the way. Bonus health is only from the the when you get items and you purchase items. And then the bonus health is the item, the health you're getting from items. Maximum health is including everything. It includes your champion's health and the item bonus health combined. So if, if Rumble has... I'd say a Rumble could easily get with a Demonic and Riley has health in it. I think he could easily get to 2,000... 2,500 health, I think, is probably quite easy for a Rumble to get to. Um, yeah, I'd probably say that. So, rough math. Um, 
would be 2,500 divide 100. So 1% 1 of that is 25 times 400. Yeah, that sounds about right. So if Rumble gets 2,000, and that doesn't include ability power, if Rumble has 2,500 health, it sounds nothing. If my math is right, correct me if I'm wrong, he gets 100 extra shield if, he's, if his health is 2,500 with 4%. So that, like a max rank, that means base with maximum health, it would be a 245 shield, so technically more. And then if he had, I don't know, 200 ability power... He'd then get an extra 50. I reckon he's probably going to gain a little bit of a shield here. The, what Wright are doing, it's going to be probably similar to what he used to have. You know, it's probably not, actually not going to be that much if you add those together with AP and then you add the health and the AP with the nerf. It's probably about the same, but what Wright is trying to make him do, they're trying to make them build health. They're trying to kind of force it, hard force, you build health on Rumble. So Rocket Belt has health on it. So you could go Rocket Belt. Riley's got health on it. Demonic has got health on it. Those three have got health on it, and they're pretty core items anyway. So there you go. And then oh, and Night Harvester. I don't. Ha Night Harvester has a bit of health on it. If you went Night Harvester, I think. Uh, heat generated from Harpoon though is going up for E, and then the R is also being nerfed because they are probably predicting it's going to be a bit strong. So there's that. Rise passive bonus mana increased. E magic damage increased. Uh, missile speed increased. So buffs to Rise, which is always a very scary prospect. If Rise has any form of strength, he does take over pro play. So he's getting more... Uh, well, that's a big buff. 6% maximum mana increase per 100 ability power. So 10%. 4% buff. That's actually big. And the E, missile speed is going up, which is always nice. And a buff to ability power. That is not a bad buff to Rise. Wow. Attack damage growth decreased. W bounce damage uh, increased. So nerfs to attack damage growth, but better bounce damage or better wave clear eventually for severe. Ugh, the parasite. E bonus attack speed decreased. R heal per hit decreased. Yumi is overperforming across all skill brackets, including pro and benefited from the support changes. Please tell that to Freak. Freak, again, he's not known as like being the, the best, let's say, PR guy. Even when he was a caster, he doesn't deal with criticism very well. There was a Reddit thread the other day that basically was like, so when is the, the, the Yumi rework happening that was supposed to get her out of pro play? And he responded, the data shows she's fine or not fine. Like the data, it shows that like she's not a problem. Pros need to basically get better and draft better. The Problem is, if I'm not mistaken, in, I think it's LCK. I saw it literally like earlier today. Um, In LCK, Yumi has had a hundred percent, a hundred percent, um, play. It, it, you know, either she's been banned or picked a hundred percent of games, and that's arguably the best league in the world. So I think pros do know what they're talking about. That's why they're pros, and that's why they're a hundred percent having Yumi in their games, whether it be a ban or they're picking her. I've always said it. She is bad for League. End of. Riot can make every excuse in the book. She is never going to be a good thing for the game. She can't be. It's, it's, it's literally impossible. You cannot have the type of game that League is, high tempo, high speed, and then give characters the option of having basically an, a, a two, three, four support items worth of strength on top of their own character and they can do all the movement. It's never going to be strong. It's never going to be uh, healthy for the game. It's always going to be bad. People will always abuse it. And obviously, Riot's reasoning that they've always given, whether it's true or not, is we made Yumi for new players. That's what they always have said. To be, it's 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 a flawed philosophy. Is is just unfortunately the problem. Their philosophy is. You have a friend that wants to play the game. League is a very daunting game to play. Oh, don't worry. You can play Yumi. Therefore, you um, don't have to do as much as other characters. So just stick on me and you can play the game. That is Riot's reasoning. <sighs> League isn't 
it's quite an old game now it's not a growing game so building a character to do that when league isn't growing growing and she's such an unhealthy and always going to be a problem because of what they riot have done it's just not worth it and again riot's rework as a lot of people pointed out i even went on the yumi reddit subreddit and a look at them and they were unhappy with it overall because riot in their rework made it more dumb but stronger in aspects and when i say more dumb they removed the skill aspects of yumi good yumi players before jumped off their target occasionally and auto attacked and used their passive again it's not much skill but there was some they got rid of that you can stay permanently attached to somebody and there's no negative literally whatsoever you don't have to detach and i've even seen and you know let alone her interaction with zeri and other ad carries i've even started to see yumi start to abandon their ad carries again i've even seen yumi start pretty early in the game screw the best friend mechanic i'm jumping on my cane jungle a level four they're starting to do it again it's always going to be a problem so i don't know the only way that she's not a problem two ways well more than two but either you make her stats so bad and nobody can play her you make her so weak that you make nobody want to play her and then that's what riot in a way should do if they want to keep her kit the way she is because uh if it is true that oh we, she's the champion for brand new players to play well she doesn't need to be strong she doesn't need to be statistically strong she's the tutorial as it were will make her really weak then so your friend can play the game they're on top of you you do all the work but they're just have they're in the they're in the game they're experiencing the game but fundamentally if you make a, a champion latch to somebody that they don't have to do any movement themselves and they're untargetable and you have no way apart from killing the enemy champion to force that champion off them it's always going to be a bad situation i've said for ages when they were doing the rework of what i was hoping either get rid of the w a whole attachment thing anyway or make it that there's ways to pop her off if you use two forms of cc on the the target she's attached to at the same time because you're using two forms of cc when normally you'd spread those out or you do use one form of cc on one champion and another form of cc on another if you're doing the two forms overlapping on the same champion yumi pops off i don't see why that's a bad thing like that is a way that you can make it a bit healthier but yeah i don't know um best friend bonus obviously 10 to 20 percent heal and shield power it's going down so it's being halved at uh based on the spell rank so w um being halved at rank one w and obviously i think technically w you max last so it, it, it's being nerfed a bit uh five percent basically uh in essence i mean it's still good as i said that that for those that are like what do you mean support i am that is the support item element because support if you look at Arden Sensor or Star for the Flowing Wind, part of the support items are 10 or 20% bonus healed and shield power. She has it inbuilt in her kit when you're attaching to the best friend. It's a support item is in essence. The E, the shield uh, value is going down uh, with no compensation AP buff, which is nice to see. And the attack speed buff is also going down early, but eventually getting to where it was anyway but at maximum rank and then the r final chapter is also getting nerfed so complete nerfs across the board no buff whatsoever so it even right says for long term we intend to continue to balance her uh, away from pro and elite play um to work towards making her a champ suitable for newer players to the game especially with friends if riot want me to tell them what to do i can do that because they're clearly getting it wrong and just to say the other point i've had friends that have started this game i've played it for 10 years i've had friends come to the game leave the game you're not helping new players by making them play a character that actively doesn't make you learn the game they're not going to stick around you're not actually teaching them how to play and movement is one of the biggest things in the game you're not actively making them learn the game they're not going to be long-term league players they're just not it's not that interesting i think it's a flawed thing from the beginning and then the other monstrosity zeri so like these two together and then like that's the thing they're both bad for the game individually and then you could put them together and voila 
<sighs> the thing with Zeri, and I've said it forever, Zeri is a very cool champion, very cool idea, but it has just a broken kit. And the problem with Zeri is, dare I say, without sounding bad, her creator, and Riot's had this problem before, her creator has too much attachment in a way. Like, he, he doesn't, and obviously it's Riot August, he's, again, not great at taking criticism. That tends to be a, a Riot dev special. Um, he doesn't see his creations as a problem. He doesn't see Viego, you know, as a problem when he was at his peak of his strength. He doesn't, I think, think Zeri's massively a problem. They a lot of the time will nerf their champions go see i nerfed it and then they'll buff something else completely at the same time so it, it it's just an ongoing battle of right you nerfed the uh you know this version of zeri but you gave her a crazy w back so now she's back to one shotting people with w okay you've nerfed that but then you buffed that version there's never just a nerf so let's see if this is just a nerf so let's see so movement speed is going up that's a buff. So, so far, we're not off to a good start. Uh, passive. The passive where Zeri steals 45% of shields. She damages and gains 10% movement speed for two seconds whenever she receives a shield has been removed. Okay, so she no longer is great against shields and she doesn't steal or doesn't gain 10% movement speed. So some people are like, Huz, look, they nerfed that. So that's why that's happening. And that is why that's happening. But does it really need to? That's the point. Just because you're taking something away that arguably she shouldn't have had anyway doesn't need you you don't need to compensate buff all the time if you know you could just do a nerf and then if you're like oh she's actually quite weak next patch do that compensation buff you don't have to compensate straight away you don't have to do that but some champions they do um and then the uh, q burst fire passive has been moved to zeri's primary passive the burst fire again that's the uh it's been moved here and th this is a big nerf, and I will say, and obviously she's been synergizing very well with Triforce. It's a very strong item. Uh, but yeah, Q Burst Fire no longer synergizes with Sheen. So that is big. But obviously, yes, what is their compensation buff that they have to give? She now scales better with on-hit crit multiplier. So a 20% buff. So yes, you can't build Triforce anymore, but don't worry. Just build all the crit items and you still do fine. There has to be a compensation buff. I had no idea what these changes were, but I just could i could call it that yes there's gonna be some nerfs but i could call it before i read them that she's gonna get really big compensation buffs it is zeri that's what the devs do with certain champions it's not all of them just certain champions a lot of them are the ones that have unhealthy kits they can't just nerf them they can't just nerf them in one patch and just see how it goes which would be the smarter thing because right now if they nerf it she might not go away because straight away she could be like, oh, bam, she's still really strong in this aspect. If you nerfed it completely, then you'd get complete data of seeing what that nerf actually did. They can't get complete data of what that nerf did because they've give, given compensation buffs. If you nerfed it, see what happens, then evaluate what buffs now does she need. It's a much healthier way of doing it, but that, they just don't do it. All right, this video has been really long, so we're going to go very quick with the items. Apologies for how long it's been. I've been in a chatty mood, apparently. So a lot of the on-hit damages from all the support items are going down. So Arden Sense is going down. Bloodthirst is more expensive. Attack damage on Gale Force is going down. Again, very overpowered item at the moment. And, you know, Yasuo and Yone are both good with it. So that's getting nerfed. Um, and again, the Cloud Burst, which obviously is the thing was a 200% crit strike chance. That's going away to a 45% bonus AD instead. Lifesteal is going up for Shield Bow. Mandate is being nerfed by the looks of it. Yep, but you're getting movement speed instead of the procs. Moonstone uh, being flattened to 35%. The shield is going up to 40. That's nice. Uh, same target heals being flattened to 25. The shield is being flattened to 30 and instead of the ability haste when you build this item you're getting heal and shield power the yumi special phantom dancer more attack speed uh rapid fire it's being flattened actually nerfed to 60 the energized damage where it used to scale static shift presumably roughly the same uh no so static shift is actually getting a buff at level six and then 180 so i guess it's been underperforming 
runes overheal was uh shield value was 200 to 300 based on your uh, level it's now going off 11 percent of your maximum ma uh, health so very good for tanks um but also you know technically for ad carries as well i guess but yeah um system changes mid lane gold here comes money mid lane min min minions are worth one less gold uh, before 40 minutes they are changing it now our mid lane minions are worth the same amount of gold as other minions of in other lanes minion equality has been achieved this is i've actually said this uh it was when when this happened um mid lane obviously is still but it was more i would say roam centric and mages were really struggling because they couldn't roam as much as a kiana or a karina or a talon could roam when they made them the gold in mid less I said it was the wrong thing to do. If anything, either keep it the same or make the gold in, in minions worth more. Because if you're playing Katarina or Kiana and you roam and you miss two to three minion waves, which is fairly common, you see these Katarinas and they just stay bot lane and they don't get that two or three extra waves. If the gold in mid is worth less, they're not missing out as much gold. So roaming doesn't hurt them as much if they roam and the roam doesn't work but they lose two minion waves if if the gold is worth less they don't lose as much if the gold is worth more then it's it's better to stay in lane unless it's a guarantee roam a lot of Katarina's Kianas etc they don't roam when it's a guarantee roam that's just their default play style so actually making the gold worth more helps mages because if their lane opponent leaves it helps a mage who can't roam helps them actually get gold income um, but it also punishes those who over roam when they probably shouldn't be I, I thought it was a weird thing that they were doing so that is going away thankfully so uh it's it's going to the same value so at least when you know when i'm playing anivia and stuff and i will say there are mid lane games being uploaded again i was in the mood to play i think i actually uploaded the anivia game earlier my first game back in mid in a few weeks um it's nice that we're actually going to get a bit more value, which is good. Red buff. Um, red buff is way more prevalent now buff sharing exists. True. Because obviously when your Kha'Zix and your AD carry can both have red buffs and you don't have to pick which one gets it, it's strong. So the damage of it is going down. The slow amount is going down and half the range champions. And the health regeneration is also going down. That's actually quite a considerable one at then. ARAM changes, never mind. Clash, we will be looking to play Clash, but probably only the Saturday because it's Father's Day here in the UK on Sunday. So I think I'll probably be doing something with that. Mythic Shop rotation, bug fixes, and there we go. But there you go. Really big patch, to be honest. Again, the game is in a bit of a spicy fiestery zone. Um, so all the only champion, and let me know. And by the way, the keyword that we're going to go with is spicy. If you put spicy in the comment section, I know you would have made it through the patch note video. Uh, and try to hide it. Don't make it obvious because then other people can just comment spicy and they can pretend that they watched the whole thing. The only champion that I'm surprised that isn't in the nerfs, I'm sure there's probably more. But Hecram is definitely, I'm surprised he's not been nerfed. He, he hasn't really been nerfed much at all. And he still is very, very popular. Maybe even Rengar as well. Rengar, Rengar as well, probably. Those two. Anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.